evening, tens of thousands of people in Cairns are being told to leave tonight as the region braces for tropical cyclone Jasper. The weather system is expected to re-intensify today after weakening yesterday. Tropical cyclone Jasper is set to make landfall near Port Douglas around 1pm tomorrow. But expected to intensify before making landfall. But damaging winds, heavy rainfall, they are all expected from today. The cyclone, as they want to do, decided it would change its, um, direct, its directions and slowed down a little bit. So it, thankfully for us, not so good for the, those of us north of us, it's shifted north slightly and, and it slowed down. So when it did cross the coast, it was further north than we uh, initially anticipated and it was at a lower intensity as well. That was the cyclone. This is our street now. It looks like a river. Oh dear. The amount of water dumped on Cairns amounts to a year's worth of rain in around 40 hours. Authorities have confirmed a number of evacuations are underway in what's been labelled the worst floods there since 1977. The biggest problem we had, as everyone knows, is that rain just didn't move. It sat over the top of Cairns and North for days much longer than it was anticipated and consequently we ended up um, having to manage the most catastrophic event that Cairns Regional Councils had to manage in a century. The event was very fast paced and it was also um, the scale of the event. So it was staying across the amount of information that was needed in order to have a current and holistic view of what was happening. It was an unprecedented event. Something, strangely enough, we practiced for a year ago, something very similar, and all of a sudden we were there. And it was happening and it happened very fast and people reacted and uh, stood up to the task. The sheer volume of water that fell between us and Mariba in that particular catchment and then watching it come down the river and over the, the Coranda Falls and, and what that actually did in the delta and the timeline, the speed of which that happened, that was, um, that was something I will never forget. Here we are on the Barren River Bridge, ladies and gentlemen. The other side, rage and thunder. The LDMG is made up of a number of core organisations that have a role in emergency and disaster response, and that includes Queensland Police, Queensland Fire and Rescue, SES, and then we also have the human um, wellbeing side, which includes the Red Cross, for example, who have a role in helping us to manage sheltering spaces. Council plays a pivotal role in the local disaster management group, primarily as the lead in coordination. However, we are one of many players and as I said before, I think what this event has um, highlighted to me is that there are many organisations that have equally as pivotal role and it's the strength of all those partners coming together that actually means that it, we're in the best position possible to manage the event. And that includes ensuring our community are aware, are resilient and therefore able to play their part in responding to an event as well. Very scary, very emotional. Um, we didn't really know what was going on, I think was the hardest thing, as we were just using our eyesight and common sense really, um, but very emotional, yeah. During this particular event was the, the challenge of the back-to-back -back, um, double week uh, event of the cyclone approaching, which was uh, a, a slow moving event, to morph into the rapid onset of the flood on the Sunday and the Monday. So that, that were the key challenges. The, the key challenges for QPS was the coordination of what our police were responding to in community, uh, responding to the, the hundreds of calls of, uh, for service and assistance to help community through that response. People were ringing for help and they were asking for police, fire, ambulance and SES because they, everybody that needed to be rescued needed to be rescued. It was a combined effort to make sure that it was done uh, methodically and as safely as possible. It was a sustained event and it was the, also the, I guess, the, the scale of exposure. 
So Cairns Regional Council, quite a large footprint. So we were dealing with uh, flooding of um, community areas to the south of Cairns. So Alumba um, into um, Goldsborough Valley, those floods. And then that, that rain or the monsoon event uh, causing issues over the Holloways Beach and Machin Beach area. The challenge was the distance actually to get people from where they were in danger in their house to where they could safely be um, looked after at a uh, evacuation centre. It was multi-agency response. Plus the community stepped up as well. Fantastic response in that instance. Uh, and actually managing that was, was a challenge that we overcame. You can go to the SES. It was two separate events um, that people look at and deal with very, very differently uh, that happened about 48 hours apart, 72 hours apart, um, which gave us a lot of new challenges compared to having a single type of event and a single impact. Primarily, when you have an event like we had with Jasper, a cyclone flooding type event, it's making sure the road network is open so people can get to and from the hospital, emergency services can get in and out, people can move around. Uh, and then it's clearing out all of the stormwater draining systems and then getting essential services back on like water and waste water. This is our, this easement. Look at the logs, rocks. Right down the street. It's the first time in living memory we've had what I would class a 1% AEP or Q100 type flood, big flood. One on, one on a lifetime flood, seeing how it, it resolved with the rain sitting just outside of our catchment. So it was raining in Cairns, but not, you would look outside and go, it's okay, it's wet, but it's North Queensland, right? Cairns Northern Beaches district is awash. Residents were told to move to higher ground. Yep, welcome to the wet season. And yes, it's deep. One that's always been at the forefront of our minds is our crystals intake, the clear water intake that goes to our treatment plant that provides drinking water for the city. Whenever you have a big event come through with a lot of rain, a lot of wind, or both, um, that can impact debris, trees, water flow, rocks, all sorts of things that go down through the natural waterway uh, and lodge themselves in the intake, which effectively stops the raw water getting to the treatment plant, which then effectively stops us getting town water. We got to the point where that we had a landslide, I had a lot of debris in that intake, um, our southern intake is a smaller version. It was offline for the same reasons. And it's the longest period of time at which we could not produce any town water in many years. And we went desperately close to running out of treated water. Um, and with a flood that was coming up behind it, what that meant was, for example, if we had have run out of reservoir water and we had to evacuate the hospital because of all the dialysis patients or other things that were in there, you would naturally take them to the airport to do that. The airport was underwater. So the sequence of those types of events, then when you reverse that back, the criticality of that raw water intake and having a second treatment plant in the south, which we are starting to build, becomes critical. It's absolutely essential because everything else cascaded from that particular point. What people didn't appreciate is that we had the Barra Delta with a metre's worth of water flooded. Underneath that water were water mains that were sheared off, whole roads taken out, so our reservoirs were simply draining out of those mains. So people were, that were doing the right thing were using less water, which was great, but we were losing water at an astronomic rate. Uh, and even when we finally did get out there, it was literally people in boats probing with a metal rod trying to find bowels, which were still underwater to isolate those mains to stop the, the uh, reservoirs from draining out. We received three months worth of waste in the week leading up to the cyclone. Um, and there's no landfill in Cairns. There's only transfer stations. So all of that material was put into all of our storage sites. Then we have to separate all that out into the different streams and all the waste gets trucked up the hill to Springmount and Mariba. That was significant and right behind the water situation become our next critical point of management in how we were going to deal with all of the waste streams that were coming in and then how we were going to get them to the different places we needed to get them when we had so much regional damage and so it was a that was a significant piece for us some of the rapid response elements of our teams were outstanding this the the real body of work didn't start 
until leading into Christmas, the Christmas week and New Year, we had um, like in the, the parks operations team, 40 odd people come back from leave voluntarily to go and help people take waste out of their homes. That was outstanding. Uh, reconstruction of roads started literally the day after we could get access in. We had trucks and machines. Um, another learning there was when you have a mass impact of an area through floodwater, especially your power networks have to get in there first. So to get into places like Holloway's Beach and Machen's Beach and all those things, there was 50, 60, 70 Ergon Energex trucks in there. Um, we had to give them priority. As soon as they, would, they could give us the ability to drive through. So really proud of our response in, in restoring our transport network, our essential services networks, getting our water and wastewater back on as quickly as we did so people could start to rebuild, which was, uh, which was especially that period of time when everyone should be celebrating their families and having Christmas and New Year's. It was, it was a tough time. Staff are amazing. I can't um, give them enough accolades. They are they're there when you need them. They respond when you ask them to come in. They know what they're doing. They are professional, consistent, and just so clear in terms of what it is that they need to do and their ability to provide advice and to go with the flow and be able to change their response capability or the way in, that, in which they're dealing with something on the turn of a, di a dime, it was absolutely phenomenal. So I can't um, speak highly enough of council staff. We've been um, very consistent as an organisation in making sure that our LDMG and our incident management team undertake annual functional exercises of a whole range of different hazards. What this uh, experience has highlighted for me is we probably need to take a step back from that now and focus on some of the more foundational skills that are involved so that no matter what event we're faced with or cascading events, which are more likely in the future, we have a team that can be ready to be redeployed to any situation as it arises. There was a lot of work that was done pre-season in relation to sheltering. So we have two designated storm tide cyclone shelters in the Cairns region, as well as a number of other sheltering options available. We undertook some assessments prior to the season in relation to making sure that we had um, the arrangements ready to be deployed. We audited all of our sheltering kits. We restocked all of the sheltering kits. We undertook venue audits to make sure that they were compliant and so making sure we've got adequate bedding, uh, adequate sleeping arrangements uh, and chairs uh, for each of those different facilities. And that meant that we were ready to redeploy at 4am in the morning when it was actually needed. People knew what they needed to do and they had all the right equipment available for them to activate those centres and be ready to receive the Cairns community in time. As for our infrastructure preparation and response, it was actually pretty good. I, I, there's not too much in that space I would change. Um, but preparing for like it's been mid to late 1970s since we've had a significant flood event through the Barren Delta. So it wasn't in living memory. People had heard stories of it, but hadn't actually lived through it. So it'll be a very different event next time something like that happens again. And our preparation, our response, what we do and how we do it, I think will change a lot from that. Um, especially around how we communicate what, it's, what it means and when that comes through. I think education is definitely foremost, but I also think that's not just a one agency's responsibility, that is everyone who plays a part or is a member of the local disaster management group, they play a role in, in building up the resiliency of their community and it's not only the community but also their agencies as well. The what ifs, we, we think about the what ifs all the time. We ask the community to think about the what ifs, it's one of the messaging from Get Ready Campaign is what if this happens to you? What if you can't get home? What if you can't get out of your home? All of those things, we think about those things and we do what we can uh, with what we have that works well. The public aren't necessarily aware that there can be 60 people inside this centre working around the clock. And when you are dealing with such a, a committed and passionate group of people, staying across, making sure that people have good uh, self-care in place and are being supported to look after their well-being that can be challenging in such a, a large-scale event where there's so much demand coming in on the teams. It's a, a feeling of heightened activity. Uh, you're always generally on edge. The adrenaline is, is high and people are working to their limit and in some cases past their limit. But all in all they pull together 
Uh, it was absolutely fantastic to see how the, the place just was a buzz of people doing their job, doing it efficiently and getting on with the task. That type of event and that level of uh, stress and um, chaos almost for, for that 48 hour period of time, there was uh, very little sleep, a lot of extreme decision making being pushed into a very short period of time um, under extreme pressure. So I, I've certainly taken away that um, there is no underestimation of what disaster management you know, can put upon you personally and as a group. When you work in a disaster, it actually brings people closer together. So working here within the Coordination Centre, you actually form bonds with people. I would just like to say thank you very much for the people that were a part of the local disaster management group, not just the council staff, but all of the other agencies that were here. Their um, ability to work side by side with us, to work together, to understand the uh, enormity of the task that we had and to be prepared to say, hey, I can do that piece. Or hey, by the way, have you thought about this? Or don't worry about it, you're doing a, or you're doing a great job. And continually pull together. I really, I, big shout out to those organisations. We do have a really res resilient Cairns community. They pull together in times of need and that worked really well. Networks, having people reach out with people within their own community, checking on each other. They were most of the fantastic stories that came out, people looking after each other and doing what needed to be done at the time and doing it as safely as possible and looking after each other, that was fantastic to see. When you have a catastrophic event like this, the people that come out of the woodwork that you never even knew were there or never imagined would be there and willing to help and support. We had a general store that was impacted, couldn't open, and yet they did their best to have foodstuffs and donated goods available for the community. They were hurting themselves, but they still did that. And that's just, that's the sort of stuff that you just can't, I can't imagine. And you just, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. I think we have a much better understanding at the moment of just the, the enormity of the impact that this event has had on Cairns. Not just our public infrastructure, but also the community infrastructure out there and importantly, the people themselves. It is still early days from a recovery perspective. We expect to be in this phase for years. And in some instances, it'll be decades, particularly for the individuals, the residents, the people who were impacted. It will be something that they take uh, almost a lifetime to get over. So I'm very pleased with where we're at at the moment, but I'm also well aware of the fact that we have a large or a long journey ahead of us in this space. As a part of our recovery effort, um, we set up what's called a recovery committee. And in that committee, there are a number of subcommittees. One of them looks at the economic recovery. So that's the small business and large business, the business economy end of town. But we also set up our human and social subcommittee, which really looks after the people aspect of things, and in particular, the residents and how they're being impacted. We work very closely with the community organisations to make sure that people had access to support to um, contractors to help them clean up. Council took away the rubbish for them. We did a lot of stuff like that in the background and then made sure that any of the volunteer efforts, not just councils, but other volunteer efforts as well, were as supported as we can be to uh, ensure that they were helping the residents out there. Job well done in retrospect. There's so much, so many moving parts. Um, going on out here at the LDCC. The, uh, the effort put in by all was outstanding and uh, look, we'll probably all learn and grow as a group into the, the, the remainder of this disaster season and into the next. A complete appreciation for um, the range of partnerships that are required to stay across an event of this scale and ensure that the needs of the community are responded to. I thought the whole thing and seeing how people work together was absolutely outstanding. It really just solidified uh, in my mind why we have a local disaster management group and how it needs to function. Um, because at the end of the day, our primary role is to save lives. And we did that. Fortitude is what comes through to me. The fortitude of the staff, of the people, and then the community um, that have had to deal with this um, event uh, now and ongoing in, into the future. 